Welcome to Cinema Gulp, everybody. This is our Gulp review of Army of the Dead. Thank you very much. Army of the Dead, everybody. This is Ben. And this is John. And we had a chance to review another Zack Snyder movie this year. I was actually interested in seeing this movie when I first heard it coming out. You know, he made Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead was pretty awesome. It kickstarted his career. Um, I've liked, you know, hit or miss movies from him along the way. His career was better at the beginning, but I kind of liked the uh, the Snyder cut. I know I didn't get to talk about it on the review, but I, I kind of liked that. So that kind of had me excited for this a little bit. Like, oh, okay, another blockbuster with a a creative mind behind it that I sometimes can enjoy. I think BVS is oh, worse. Yeah, I almost forgot about that one. Kind of scraped it from my memory. Yeah. Yeah, I could, sit, I could sit through this a lot more, you know, easily than sitting through that again. This That's is definitely easier to sit through and more enjoyable than BVS. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was horrible. I thought it had fun moments. And those are the two best things I can say about it pretty much. Uh, I enjoyed watching about 20% of it, if nothing more than just, I want to call, I want to start a new thing. I don't think this is a popcorn movie, John. I think this is a cocktail movie. This is a beer movie. Typically Zack Snyder's fan base. Anyway, a bunch of lugheads drinking. You need a, a, you need house a bit of a buzz to enjoy it is what you're saying. That's yes. Thank you. You said it quicker than I did. Yeah. yeah. I definitely know. Like I always kind of call it a leave your brain at the door movie sometimes, but that, that kind of sucks when you're watching a movie to think you can't be engaged and thinking like you're supposed to enjoy it by tuning out that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but that is kind of the best way to enjoy this movie um because there's it's just so flawed the writing is so yeah. bad this is going to be um, somewhat of a spoiler heavy review yeah it, it squanders its premise like i don't even know like if you say zombie a zombie horde in vegas there needed to be more vegas to that um it's the typical Zack Snyder intro that is some, you know, driven by a song um, that's kind of this montage with slow mo. Visually, it was cool, but that's like the the best parts of the Vegas stuff. And then the 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 rest of the movie taking place in the rubble of Vegas, it just made the movie feel that much smaller. Like once they got to that stuff, I just feel the way that this movie is shot, it you don't really get the scope of what the title army of the dead taking place in vegas this this uh, zombie movie in vegas it just i don't know i think the premise does not pay off that well in this movie and i agree with you turn your brain off at the door because why turn your brain off to watch it when the filmmaker never turned his brain on to make it that's <laughs> the way i look at it there's you know this is the first movie that Zack snyder wrote directed and was the dp for and it fucking shows especially in the dp i don't know why he decided to shoot his own movie because he used to hire really great cinematographers which were kind of the highlights of his movies this movie is flat and ugly and no scope to it at all like no depth of field like just gross look just very ugly and set driven it looks like sets Yes, it definitely looks like sets. It, but I know he came from a world of, you know, 300 where he had those digital sets and was one of the first ones to kind of make a movie, even though you could tell that it had the digital sets, it still worked for the film he was making. But he wasn't so, shooting those. <laughs> you know, like, no, no, no. I know. I just think um, when I see so much of that in this movie, it reminds me of things like 300 and how well, like, that movie's not perfect in any way in terms of, of mixing the backgrounds and making them look realistic, but there's something about it being driven from a comic book or whatever, that it kind of worked for that one where this is supposed to be a real tale, you know, a real world, the world we inhabit. Um, and it just, yeah, it, it looked uh, obviously blurred out. I think it was obviously a conscious choice that he made for it to have so much, you know, out of focus moments and, and blur. It reminded me of, one of our favorite movies, your favorite movie over the last many years, Annihilation, The some of the tricks that they used within the shimmer to create an out-of-focus feel to disorient the viewer, but they did it for reasons that were story-driven and, you know, driven by a visual style that made sense for what was going on in the movie versus just, hey, I'm artsy. Like, this really... The, his artsy side takes over too much of what should be a fun movie. Since BVS, he's really gotten into this. As characters are backing out of frame, they go out of focus. 
and he utilized it even more in like Justice League. And in this one, this is what you're talking about. It's so overblown. With Annihilation, it was all about purpose. It was all about disorientation, things like that. It was there to make the viewer feel like the, the people in the movie. I liked a couple of those in this, especially the first one, I think, where you have sort of like the zombie queen backing out of frame. I, that was the one that I thought made sense because it's like this mythological thing. You don't know a lot about mm -hmm. it and it's kind of leaving frame. But with so much shit in this movie, this movie, John, reminds me that aside from Watchmen, which I think is his most mature uh, effort as a director, maybe not his best, but his most mature, he's a childish filmmaker. He has this very light, I don't give a fuck approach to storytelling where it's it's like a kid scribbling shit down in a crayon and leaving out big details of the story that they just don't care about or they don't think about. And and I know what people are going to say, like, this is a turn, like we just said, turn off your brain type of movie, whatever. But at what point is it OK to flat out like neglect logic, story threads? through lines motivations entirely like there's so many things in this movie that it's it's like watch it, it almost kind of reminds you of like those late 90s early 2000 ones but i should i need to give those ones more credit because it's just on air or something <laughs> your, well, well con air at least like fills in all its gaps it like it, it doesn't leave anything open-ended put the bunny back in the is somebody not telling him like, well, what about this? And what about that? I mean, we're spoiling things. So the fucking end of this movie, the guy gets out of the fucking safe. It's like, well, how do you get out of the safe? And how'd the guy lock him in the safe? And if you locked him in, how do you get out? Like, I don't know. There's, there's no. little small things that he just, it feels like he doesn't care. You, you nailed, nailed it on the head with just saying childish filmmaker. I mean, that really said it, but I'm glad you elaborated on that. I like him a lot better than a Michael Bay, but he's got a lot of the same sensibilities. Yeah, and he seems like a good dude, so I hate like bashing on him in that way. Mm -hmm. But it's just his movie, and you're 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 so right. Like I love the Dawn of the Dead remake. I fucking love that movie. I think it's very rewatchable. It's very fun. It builds the characters really good. Why did he stop doing that? Oh, I can play with all these fun visual techniques, and yeah, he falls in love with the toys and like yeah. Which I mean, is kind of a Michael Bay thing, and and also someone who uh, was who should probably get a co-screenwriting credit for this movie, James Cameron, because <laughs> this movie is just a carbon copy of Aliens with zombies. I mean, you've got so many characters that are ripped from it. You've got a Vasquez character that's kind of an amalgamation of two different characters in this movie, the chick with the red headband. I mean, even the setup to the movie has shades of aliens with certain scenes. You've got Batista, who has his tortured past and has a, a nightmare after the offer is given to him that makes him rethink his reason for going back in. I thought everyone's motivation for going into a city of the dead especially people who had already been there and seen how, you know, crazy it is. Not a single one of them had a good motivation. It was all total just, you know, like you said, like childish, lazy screenwriting just to be like, oh, this person wants to go in for their Instagram account. The safe cracker, even him is like, oh, it's a chance to open this safe. But um, I mean, they all know that the, that it comes with the army of the dead tied to this task. It just was I did not buy it at all. The, the character and the scene that sums up Mike, uh, Michael Bay, Zack Snyder's <laughs> entire approach to this movie is the pilot who, when they go, hey, we have this thing, it's going to give you $2 million. Okay, I'm done. I'm in. Two million bucks, I'm in. I don't care what it is, I'm in. Like, that's literally the but Zack Snyder approach was, to this movie. She was, I guess, one of my favorite characters. If I had, you know you she I had wasn't say, actually there, right? Did yeah, you, yeah. I, and I kind of remembered that while watching. I was like, oh, because I don't even really know her that well other than like- She's a comedian I've heard something. it before. Yeah, I knew she's a comedian. So when I saw the name and stuff and saw her show up on screen, I was like, there was something in the news about her replacing somebody. Is this the movie? So I looked it up and realized, oh, okay. So then about halfway through as I was watching, I was kind of paying attention to, you know, how she's being shot and stuff they, like that. I, I'll give them credit. They did a good job of making yeah. her look like she was there. Very good job. But one thing that did kind of impress me once I was paying attention to that was like how she was, um, you know, meshed into the movie when she wasn't really there for so many scenes. So, because um, I, I heard something that she, 
she only had one day where other actors were on set with her or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. She only met a couple of them. And like even lines of dialogue that she has with some, they said, I've still never even met her. No, they the way they like composited her into the movie was great. The color grading that they laid over her it just worked perfectly. Uh, the problem was, is you could tell, and I, I think you said like she was one of your favorites. You could tell she was in a different movie. Her delivery didn't have, and I'm not really bashing her. Maybe that was the way she decided to take the character, but it seemed because she was just not there on set with anybody, it shows that she doesn't understand the severity of what's happening. And maybe that was just her performance, or maybe this comedian's not a great actress. I do, I do like her approach. <laughs> But uh, and spoilers, I, I love the I love shit. the fact that they fucking just killed her with a big ass like spike through her at the end. We got the Vasquez death, and obviously we have the the Burke the the Burke replacement guy death, which just went yeah. on and on forever with the CGI fucking leopard or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, they were trying to co again. He's he tries to copy popular movies too closely. That's ob that's ripping off the Revenant very closely, in my opinion. It yeah. just like while watching, it, I was like, okay, I feel like these are like trying to get the same angle and the same shot. Yeah. Except he doesn't have that. He's a good filmmaker, but he doesn't have that eye that, that Cameron and his collaborators had, you know, to, yeah. because well, well, Cameron had six fucking rubber suits. So you have to get so creative to do that, you know, and that usually results in something better than we've got endless possibilities. And here is our CGI budget, but the one death that I did kind of appreciate was the woman who was su supposedly we haven't even talked about Batista yet because there's really not much to talk about. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Batista's like maybe love interest from the past or whatever. And at oh, the very yeah. second that it seems like they might get back together, like a zombie comes in and turns her head around. It could have been done more shocking. Like it could have been shot in a way where you didn't see it coming to some degree, or at least it was uh, fairly shocking. Like no, I, mean, I know, you know that like, you know when that elevator is coming down, something's gonna happen. But yeah, yeah maybe it, it didn't it, come it, out of the it, blue it enough. It didn't have like a scary impact, and it what and because of a stupid digital bone popping out at the last second, yeah, it yeah, also kind of ruined some of like the visceral effect of it. So much like everything in this movie, like it didn't really have real tension. Nothing scary. No, nothing scary. And like, I mean, look at the title here. Look at the colors of the marketing. Like it's not, I, I guess it's trying to play on trying to be fun and vibrant and like v Viva Las Vegas or whatever. Like even a heist taking place within some kind of zombie situation sounds like an interesting movie. But again, there wasn't enough heist stuff going on. No, there it was, wasn't it was enough. more of like the beats of aliens. Like they were on a rescue mission, which they weren't really. Everything they promise you at the setup of this movie does not come into fruition at any like, OK, the great concept of aliens or I'm sorry, of zombies now having like skills to be leaders and like they, they, they can kind of control the pack. There's like a king and a queen. It's never explored in the slightest outside of telling us that there's this and there's this. We see the two and then it's there it happens but why like where is where did that come from like why is that not part of the story because it's an interesting idea and i think land of the dead uh george romero's land of the dead explores a little bit that zombies eventually can take charge and get smart but this one just thrusts you into it and never explains anything and tries to set up a sequel uh with our character that's somehow miraculously gets out of the safe and that whole ending scene is just it's so terrible and it's so terrible. It's so ter it's like Zack Snyder was just drunk with his buddies. And they're like, let's go to the studio and shoot this like last scene real quick. Just, you know, we're just goofing. I'll turn off my car for you. And we're wearing the perfect outfits today to, to point it out. Why the hell would every single one of these characters go into the army of the dead land sleeveless? Like that's oh, where yeah. every person got bit. Well, because you gotta everyone's see how gotta have their, their tanks off and throw off their, their arms. You gotta see their tattoos and but this is like arms. I if I if I read it or heard it correctly in the movie, this is like five years. People would have already invented some kind of I mean they already have it. I don't it doesn't need to be invented, some kind of armor wear that you could wear. So at least for your bare minimum, you have certain areas covered. Yeah, maybe you have vulnerable spots, but people would like 
honestly, this group was just the, the dumbest group of people ever. I don't remember how Dawn of the Dead works if, if it's only a bite. I think it is only a bite. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I would think, honestly, these undead fuckers, their claws, their their fingernails, if they scratch you, you should you should turn as well. And that's been in certain movies. And then like 28 day, days later, where it's more of a virus within the blood. That's the blood, really, the blood, yeah. That's most likely, like all this blood that's flying everywhere, you're always gonna get infected. This movie goes with only the bite, but it's, it's inconsistent with how quickly certain people change, you know, that guy at the end, what the fuck? He's on a plane to Mexico before he changes. He walks. Yeah. He takes, that's like a, like a two day montage of him getting out of the fucking yeah. city. And he didn't even know he was bit. So it's like, he never went to the bathroom and checked his body or washed his arms yeah. until he's I, on the plane with the stewardess. Going like, back to some of the aliens references all throughout this movie. Um, Jesus the, Christ. The, the Vasquez chick that that whole scene is set up just like the hive where they have to, they don't give up their weapons, but they're told don't shine your light in their face. Like you have to walk through this in the dark and be vulnerable. So it's kind of the same thing of them giving up their, their ammunition and walking through vulnerable. Yeah. And then she gets the Vasquez chick. Like, honestly, couldn't you have just changed the headband to blue? She's Something gonna different? wear an outdated fucking bandana. Don't make it get the exact same Vasquez headband. Get Vasquez moment. Then she becomes Drake when she's left behind. She doesn't you know. say let's scissor or let's paper. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Say let's scissor. <laughs> okay, so Batista. Uh, great as Drax. And that's about only thing he's great as. There, there's like kind of a sad story in there about like what happened with him and his wife and his daughter had to see him like shove a knife through her head. It just, and, I, and, and, I and it's actually one... played okay in the moment. Yeah, and it's played okay in the moment but, uh, for sure when he has to kill the wife, but also the way yeah. it comes around full circle that the that's daughter what I mean, has to yeah. kill him at the end when he turns. Yeah. That was actually a moment I kind of like how how much Me too. Me too. Uh, grief she had in that moment. She She does the same thing as him. She, you know, she screams and everything right and after. That's his, that's his best little nugget of a performance. But the whole time that that scene was happening, I was sitting there going, okay, we know the pilot's dead and we know the helicopter's in rubble. Where's the woman that, that the daughter went there to save? I guess she also died because the whole mission went to shit. So no one got any money and everyone just died anyway. So the whole movie is completely pointless. <laughs> uh, where is she? Oh, we got nine minutes. So oh, I got to, you got to drop me in and I got to go find her and save her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly the same the ending of aliens. And I think we already said it. The, the helicopter's supposed yeah. to wait for them to come back and they're not, it's not God there. Damn you! Even without being an aliens fan or, you know, knowing aliens like the back of my hand, I knew that's what was happening in this movie, that when they walked out there and the helicopter wasn't there, okay, it's just gonna fly back in a couple seconds. Like that wasn't even a question in my mind. There, there's some great scenes where Batista's just tossing zombies over his shoulders and no one can miss the head in this movie. Even people that have never shot guns before can't miss head, the head. Everyone hits attention. every zombie in the head, every single shot. Yeah, how can there be any tension whenever, when they can hit <laughs> yeah. everyone? It's just ridiculous. Although I did like, the Vasquez chick, her fight to get out of that. Love that, that scene. Love that scene. Was like you did kind of believe that she was holding her own um, and getting, you know, getting the headshot when she needed to and avoiding the bite. But at totally. the same time, it's like kind of unrealistic. There's just so many of them. She would have been. No, but something. that scene was well choreographed and fun. And you're like, you're rooting for her because you're like, fuck, her dumbass decides to tell the sleazy company guy, like, hey, uh, I don't trust you and I'm going to tell everybody about you as soon as I can. And it's like, well, of course he's going to try to kill you. Like that scene actually could have been more intense or, or there'd be more tension in that scene if the lighting was right. Like the whole point when well, they walk in there, they say, okay, well, we can't, we can't shine a light on them because, you know, we're going to alert them. So everyone turn off your flashlights. Yeah. And then it didn't really get dark in there at all. And they were using these like I, little markers. Yes. It wasn't dark at all in there. Really. This, that's funny that you brought that up um, because I have this little thing where it's like this, this thought in my head is how different of a Snyder movie this looks. It definitely, it doesn't look as nice, doesn't look as pretty because he decided to shoot it himself for some reason. But it, it, there's lots of vibrance and there's, it's funny that you mentioned that scene because I'm like, there's lots of extra lights. Uh, aside from the fact that the whole entire movie is shot, very interesting choice. It's all shot during the daytime. Whereas at night, it could have had this sort of like escape from New York feel, but it's all shot in the day. And I, I think that was a mistake. 
but I um, agree. It's, but it's, I, yeah. I I kind of appreciate that the lighting helped some of the scenes where you can kind of see what's happening. But I it's funny that that dark scene had all this added light to it. Uh, the one that you're talking about. Yeah, I was thinking while watching that, how great would it be if it was almost just completely pitch black with only you seeing the gunfire uh, mm -hmm. strobe? Mm -hmm. That would have been so much more tense. But there's all this artificial lighting, and she's not to be able, not supposed to be able to see, but we see. I also don't get. Okay, so he he's the only zombie who's smart enough <laughs> to take some type of armor. He did, and he's the too. leader of them. And he Why did tells he tell them, everybody else to put one like, of None on. of them make anything else. <laughs> and like that, that whatever that metal is, is strong enough to block all these high caliber, like the best of the best machine guns. Okay, maybe I'll buy into that. But still, I, I think they could have easily still taken that guy out just because he had the stupid arm. I guess if you take a head of a zombie, it'll somehow create like a, a weapon for the guard. I love the weapon for the, when are we going to stop using the weaponized government? <laughs> you have yeah. that now with dinosaurs, oh uh, aliens, God. fucking zombies. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait no, until they have to weaponize vampires. The the whole mission to get the head, the, the whole Burke character who's really out, they're not out for the money. They're out for this head. Yeah. Like, I feel like <laughs> that could have been accomplished head, with two or three people who actually were on the same side, well-trained, and hired the coyote for $20,000 or whatever. Yeah. Why does he have to go with this group? Just go yeah. do that on your own. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Was there something about that team where they needed them because they were the only ones who could get to that camp and get in because well, they, of the daughter, but that's it not was really the, the case. It was the that's blonde the lady case. was the smuggler of the kids. That she would smuggle people through the city out of the yeah. camp. But so I guess they needed her. I know we watched Phantasm Two, and that movie is somewhat famous in my mind for establishing this fucking awesome weapon that they only use once. But at least <laughs> they use it once, and it's fucking cool. The quadruple shotgun. This yeah. movie has the fucking badass saw which we do see him use it in the intro but what a they, waste. On that trip, they never use it why the is that trip, it doesn't get used that character knocks a dude out and is like don't ever touch my saw i thought that that was gonna be his character he never fucking uses it that's with everything that snyder did writing this movie but this has happened countless times where that's the, you're showing the character in these like featurettes and they're 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 premiered on the poster with this fucking saw and then they never fucking turn the goddamn thing on the the intro of how the zombie escapes with the stupid idiots leaving the, the idiots yeah. they want. god that dialogue it was reminding me of i think there's a there's some weird scene in uh halloween the new halloween movie where the two cops are in the car talking about a bomb me sandwich yeah it was like that inane <laughs> fucking stupid dialogue that was just so unrealistic and this was the intro and then the second you see the the married couple on the side of the road you know again you know what's going to happen they're going to you know they're going to be i maybe i didn't know he, she was going to go down on them, but they were, i knew they were going to be fooling around in a way that made them crash that was just too obvious and so you have to wait for that to happen and then it does you yeah. know what would have been so much better is if like forget the married couple all together it just starts out kind of quiet and eerie on the road in Nevada and the two people are talking and one of them turns to the newbie and he goes did you see that movie Night of the Living Dead and then they crash and then you get the Triaxian theme <laughs> I bashed it pretty hard just because it's more of a disappointment. It's just like, come on, you can do better. Uh, hire a guy who can write with you. You don't have to have somebody write the whole thing, but have someone write with you and fill in the holes, you know? Fill in the details, Zach. Like, because to me, the biggest problem was like the details were just left completely undone and untouched. And it's like, you and I have talked about this for fucking five years. That takes you right out of stuff when you can tell a filmmaker either doesn't care or doesn't even know as much as we do about his own story, you know? <laughs> and that's disappointing because he is technically a very good director and can be. Um, I love Watchmen and and I love uh, Dawn of the Dead, you know? And I and I and when I saw 300 in the theater, I'd never seen anything like it. I thought it was incredible, you know? Yeah. 
Um, but for this movie, I got to give it a five because I'm calling it, you know, uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon fun instead of popcorn fun. I think if you have some beers with your homies, you can really enjoy aspects of it. Just fast forward through the beginning and then who cares about the rest of it? So I'm going five, John. I feel like I should go super, super low with this movie. Um, but I still kind of had some fun. There was a couple characters that, you know, they're not well-written characters by any mean, but their uh, comedic effect for the for the movie was was there. So I liked the the pilot. I liked the safe cracker enough to to laugh at some of the jokes surrounding them. Um, but man, it's filled with a lot of other characters that that are annoying as well and and really stupid. Everyone's so stupid. It's like you're saying. It's a filmmaker that I like, and I know he could do better. I guess that's another reason to to knock it down. But I still kind of had fun watching it enough to like. I had more fun than the Angelina Jolie one. I had more fun than King Kong, uh, recent the, whatever the King Kong one was. So, but it's just as dumb. Okay, I am. I'm gonna go lower than those movies. But I don't know. <laughs> that just feels weird. I'm gonna go with a 3.5. Everyone who watches this, please. Uh, click the like button. We notice that there's more views than likes. You can also click the thumbs up as you view it. Uh, also, subscribe and tell your friends. John, where can they find Cinema Gulp? You can find Cinema Gulp on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Everybody out there, thank you. Thank you very much. We drink your cinema. I drink it up! Why can't you see?